The day has finally arrived. The Quest Pro is officially here. And thanks to Meta, I got the chance to check out the Quest Pro a little bit early. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Quest Pro, what it comes with, how it works, and give my first impressions of the device after spending several hours inside of this headset. Let's jump to it right now. All right, here we go. Let's talk about what's in the box first. Obviously, it comes in this shiny new Meta Quest Pro box. And when you open it up, you'll see the Quest Pro and the brand new Quest Pro touch controllers. They're actually a little bit more hefty than I was expecting them to be. I don't know if it's the new haptics, the fact that there's cameras built into it now that it has a built-in battery. Whatever it is, it actually feels heavier per controller than the Quest 2 controllers do, and that was a little surprising to me. Also in the box, obviously, is a charging brick that you'll use to plug in your charging dock, as well as some manuals and a cleaning cloth, because, you know, everything comes with a cleaning cloth these days. It also comes with two different cables. One is a controller charger cable, seemingly to plug the controllers in by themselves, and one is the charging dock cable. Now, one thing I will say about this is this boxing and everything in the box feels more premium, which does make sense considering how expensive this device is. On top of that, the box also includes a lens cover that'll actually fit inside of the Quest Pro to protect the lenses. It's a soft silicone lens cover that'll fit down inside of the eyepiece. And then there is obviously the Quest Pro. Now the Quest Pro is a lot different in setup than the Quest 2. That comes with a standard fabric type of strap. Quest Pro comes with more of like a halo style strap. It uses the wheel on the back to tighten down the back of the headset. There is a wheel on the top that you use to adjust the positioning of the lenses, how far away they are from your eyes. And you actually can use eye tracking inside of the headset to get the perfect fit, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's got cabling that runs from the back of the headset because that is where the battery is. And it's got nice, soft, built-in foam on the back headpiece and on the front piece where it sits up against your forehead. Now let's set that aside for just a minute, we'll get back to the headset. But for now though, inside of the box, you'll also get the charging dock for the Quest Pro that fits both the Quest Pro and both of the Pro Touch controllers. And then underneath that, you'll find the light blockers. Now these are the sort of light blockers that magnetically attach to either side of the Quest Pro. There's a left one and a right one. This isn't going to block all of the light. There is a full light blocker, but it does not officially release until December. I did end up getting one of those and I tested it out. It's a soft kind of rubbery thing that magnetically attaches to the Quest Pro. It's not bad. It actually feels a lot like the PlayStation VR's gasket where it's soft and it's squishy. It doesn't have like a solidity to it. You just put it up against your face and it sits there because the Quest Pro just kind of sits on your forehead. It doesn't actually press against your face. Now back to the Quest Pro. Like I mentioned, the wheel on the back adjusts the back headpiece, the tightness, and the wheel on the front adjusts the eyepiece, how close and far away it is from your face. Spinning around the head, you'll see the cameras along the outside, along with a charging port on the back and a charging connector on the bottom that connects to the charging dock. On the front, you'll see the camera array and the shiny faceplate. You can see the reflection of my camera right in there. It's a very reflective surface, but that's where the camera array is. It's a sleek and sexy looking headset. It definitely is more balanced. Just holding it, you can tell that it's more balanced. On the sides, on the strap, you'll see the buttons. One is a power button and one is a volume up and down button. And yes, it does come with some little sticky bits that you can satisfyingly peel off of the headset. Now that's what's in the box and what it looks like from the outside. It feels nice, it feels premium, it definitely has a nice quality feel to it. But what about inside of the headset? What does it feel like? What does it look like? Well, I can tell you right now, I powered up this headset and immediately saw the difference in clarity. I don't know what exactly is causing the clarity difference. It's actually a lower resolution, but a higher pixel density than the Quest 2. So maybe that's what it is. You can't tell from the footage you're seeing, but looking through these new lenses, which by the way, don't have stepped adjustments for your IPD. You actually just slide them in and out and it's not stepped. It's smooth. So you can place them wherever you need to. And the IPD shows up on your screen in the inside, like the original Quest. But my first thought upon this thing powering up and seeing the home environment was, wow, this looks really crisp because it did. The screens definitely provide a deeper black than the Quest 2 and a higher, more crisp look to them. Looking at text is definitely, definitely better. Just looking at the menu screen on the Quest Pro in comparison to the Quest 2, 
There is a big difference. I can't wait for this technology to make its way to a consumer headset because it's going to, I think it's going to blow a lot of people's minds at just how much more clear this is. Now, that's not exactly the same when it comes to the mixed reality of the past through cameras, but we'll talk about that here in just a minute. I messed around for quite a while, tried out some games, I tried out some experiences, I played with the settings. Now, before I go any further, I did enable the eye tracking and the facial tracking, but I did not get into an experience that actually allowed me to test that out. I need to do some more research on which experiences work, and because I didn't know anyone that actually had one at the same time yet as I do, and I couldn't jump in with them, it wasn't really advantageous for me to jump in and use it without being able to see myself. <laughs> so that's one thing I did not try that I look forward to testing out and doing a video on probably later on this week. Speaking of setup, I mentioned this a while back, but there's actually a setup process that you go through that allows you to adjust your headset to the optimal positions, and it tells you to move it, tighten it, lift it up, put it down using the eye tracking. So it sensors, so it centers your eyes exactly where you need to be, which is a pretty cool idea. So if you have eye tracking enabled, it actually can go into a setup process that tells you to push the headset up a little higher. It'll actually measure where your eyes are and tell you what your IPD needs to be. It's pretty awesome really actually, and it really gets a good fit for the headset when it's all said and done. The controller tracking is honestly fantastic. Like those cameras on those controllers do an amazing job at keeping up with fast movement, putting your arms behind your head, behind your back. So from a VR standpoint, the Quest Pro is definitely really nice to look at. I really like the new pancake lenses. I actually found myself using the Quest Pro without the face gasket 90% of the time. And honestly, it didn't take away from the immersion for me. I actually like to be able to see around my room if I needed to. Now, if you're playing an immersive game and you want to have the gasket on there, that's one thing, but I definitely can see using the Quest Pro for productivity purposes and for mixed reality without actually having any light blockers on. I really do like it that way. So that's kind of my impressions of the VR aspect of it. But what about the mixed reality stuff? Well, I went through and I played through the new I Expect You to Die and the color pass through is an interesting beast. It's definitely considerably better than the Quest 2 but it's kind of an odd color passer because it uses black and white cameras and another sensor to actually kind of paint the picture, the colors that it needs to be. So when you move your hands really fast, if you move your head, you actually can kind of see the black and white underneath of the color, which is a little odd. You get used to it and it's not that bad, especially if you're just standing at your desk doing productivity stuff, but it's definitely noticeable if you're trying to play a game or something. Although playing the I Expect You To Die experience was quite fun in mixed reality, being able to see the color of the room Setting up the room, the room process of setting it up worked really well too. I've had some problems with the Quest 2 doing that in the past, but I was able to actually set up my entire room, a couple spots for my desk, my windows, and my door, allowing me to set the whole thing up, and now I can walk around my room. And because it is color pass through and it's much clearer, it's way easier to actually walk around your room and to actually go from playing in the VR area, walking to the desk, transitioning to desk mode, and then jumping into something like Immersed, which I did test out. It was just really hard to capture because I was having some issues capturing it. But it was really cool to stand in my room with these huge monitors in color pass-through and really, really clear looking at those monitors in Immersed. There's definitely a lot of cool potential for mixed reality inside of this headset. The color pass-through is just okay. Now, I know I've spit a lot of information at you in a very short amount of time, and that's just because I wanted to give you all the lowdown on everything that I thought of this device. Let me just put it down into simple layman's terms. Now, this is not a review. Remember, this is just my first impressions. Number one. This headset is definitely much clearer and more comfortable to wear. Even just playing normal Quest 2 games on this headset was a joy because of how clear things were. Comfort-wise, it's definitely more comfortable out of the box than the Quest 2. You don't have any weight on your cheekbones at all. All the weight is on your forehead with that nice comfortable pad. It just feels like the headset's kind of hovering in front of your eyes, which actually feels really nice. Mixed reality was cool, and it's something I definitely want to experiment with more. It wasn't mind-blowing yet, necessarily, although I expect you to die was a lot of fun seeing things pop up in my room and being able to actually play in my space. Now, if this technology comes to Quest 3, it'll be a lot better because it'll be a lot cheaper, but I definitely wouldn't buy the Quest Pro just for the mixed reality stuff that you can do in it, unless you're doing productivity, because the clarity of these lenses and how things look definitely allows for much better productivity. I was able to get my monitors huge and immersed, and I could clearly read text and see what I was doing. It's definitely something I want to play around with and try to transition my work into VR, because it is really, really cool. But my first impressions after spending several hours inside of this headset, by the way, the battery does die pretty darn quickly. I got maybe two hours max out of the headset. The controllers, though, definitely last longer than that. They're 
They haven't even come close to dying as of yet, and I just pop them on the dock and they charge up with the headset. So those are my first impressions. So far, they're favorable in a lot of ways, but not necessarily for you. It all depends on if you're looking to buy into a productivity headset or you want a premium experience for Quest 2 games. Even though the headset dies faster, you could always combat that with a battery pack if you wanted to. If you're looking for a premium experience and you don't mind spending $1,500, then you might be interested in the clarity and the blacks and the way that everything looks inside of this headset. It definitely looks much different than the Quest 2 by my eye. Now, just as a normal VR gamer, I would not recommend buying this because it's $1,500. That is $1,100 more than the Quest 2. You could buy several Quest 2s with that amount of money and you'd still get amazing experiences on the Quest 2 because it's exactly the same platform. If you're a social VR player and you want to be able to use the eye tracking and mouth tracking and you want a standalone headset to do that, then I can't really comment on that. I'm looking forward to checking it out more. This headset though is definitely designed with comfort and productivity in mind, which is kind of what we've known all along. And I personally am excited to be able to continue using it for those purposes. There you go, there is some thoughts on the Quest. Pro. But what do you think? Are you going to grab one of these expensive headsets? Let me know down in the comments what you think. And if you want to grab a Quest Pro because you want that premium experience or something about this screams your name and you want to pay $1,500 for a brand new VR headset, there's a link down in the description to grab it right now. I'll have more Quest Pro content coming soon, including comparisons with the Quest 2, exactly what makes it different, why it's different, how it's better, how it's maybe not better. Obviously, price factors into that pretty heavily. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want more videos about the Quest Pro or the Quest 2. There's some awesome stuff coming up next month for the Quest 2 you will not want to miss. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. And thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and happy questing.